It's a commercial comrade. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new series that I'm starting called Understanding Commercial Law. So while I was doing applications for law firms, I struggled initially in understanding what it was that a law firm actually did. So in this series, I'm going to go through some key practice areas. I'm going to explain each one, hopefully in a way that's simple and easy to understand. And what are the day to day duties of a lawyer in each of those practice areas? So the first area that we're going to be focusing on is antitrust. Not for any specific reason, just alphabetically, it's the one that pops up first. The first thing to really understand is what exactly is antitrust? So antitrust laws themselves are laws developed by government bodies to protect consumers from businesses and businesses performing unfair practices, particularly from things like monopolies, from things like price fixing, and from anti-competitive mergers or overall business activity. And furthermore, the risks of non-compliance with these antitrust laws for businesses are particularly significant. Not only can businesses be sanctioned and be fined very heavily for not complying with antitrust laws, the reputational damage that they can suffer is often very significant too. The regulating body in the UK for anti-competitive practices, the Competitions and Markets Authority, and it's constantly on the lookout, scanning potential mergers, acquisitions, or other business practices for any potential anti-competitive elements. And so with all of this in mind, let's now turn to the role of a commercial lawyer in an antitrust department. So the first really important element is actually assessing risk of regulatory enforcement on a proposed transaction. So that's investigating and using due diligence to see if a proposed merger or acquisition is going to pose a problem or is going to involve some of the regulating authorities. This is particularly interesting if a transaction is multi-jurisdictional because oftentimes you won't just need clearance from the UK Markets Authority, you'll have to get clearance from each of the jurisdictions that the proposed transaction is involved with. In a proposed merger or acquisition, lawyers can often find themselves advising on the structure of a deal. Commercial lawyers can find themselves working on navigating those merger clearances. So making sure that businesses are totally compliant with what's needed, what's required, and ensuring that moving forward, there's not going to be any problems post-acquisition. Now, this advisory aspect is really important, and it's a really integral role of commercial lawyers to make sure that businesses take the positions that pose the least antitrust risk. Now, say, for instance, that a business is found to not be compliant with the antitrust laws put in place in that jurisdiction. Commercial lawyers could be instructed to help litigate those monopolization claims. So instructed by some industry leading companies to litigate for them in regards to the antitrust claims brought by the regulatory authorities. So this is one really interesting way in which antitrust as a practice is something that spans several practices within a commercial law firm. Next, one area that was completely new to me when I was researching was cartel and dawn rates. Now, in the context of antitrust or competition law, a dawn raid is a surprise investigation carried out by officials of a regulatory body to try and find incriminating evidence on a business. So this can mean that officials turn up to a business at the early hours of the morning, completely search it from top to bottom and attempt to find any evidence that could link the business back to being anti-competitive. Now, this is a really tense and difficult situation. And commercial lawyers are needed in this too, perhaps with on-site representation, perhaps in drafting and implementing certain plans and procedures. You know, some commercial lawyers work to organise mock dawn raids where they aim to try and train employees on how to react if a dawn raid were to take place. Now that's dawn raids covered, but what about cartel? Well, a cartel is just a term to signify an illegal agreement between competitors. That can be, for instance, price fixing or maybe market sharing. And a cartel investigation, it can be initiated by any sort of national antitrust authority. So like dawn raids, 
These cartel investigations require a rapid response, and commercial lawyers are often the first port of call, helping to review documentation, to assess risk, and to help to develop solutions. And these sorts of solutions can be developing, drafting, negotiating settlement terms and contracts in order to close uh, the investigation. So I hope that was useful. I hope that's helped to clear up or at least better explain what a lawyer's role is in an antitrust department. Now let's go ahead and have a look at a new story that's really interesting and that's directly related to uh, antitrust practices. So back in 2020, Facebook, now known as Meta, announced that it was going to be taking over Giphy, which is an online GIF uh, platform. So this deal was reported to be around 400 million, and accordingly, it was picked up on by the UK Competition and Markets Authority. After a long investigation, the UK watchdog concluded that the proposed acquisition of Giphy by Facebook would raise a number of anti-competitive issues for social media platforms, particularly because of the lack of supply of animated GIFs. So although the acquisition was actually complete by Facebook, the UK watchdog and regulator actually ordered Meta to sell Giphy on. So yeah, thank you for listening, guys. I hope that's been useful. I hope that gave you an introductory insight into what the role of an antitrust lawyer involves. Uh, do let me know if you would like to see more of these videos. I'm hoping to do one for each one of the key practice areas.